stop laughing. We are recording. Um, so there I am, about to hit record on the Comedy Slab podcast. And it, am I allowed to call you his nibs? You can call me your nibs, my nibs. Just call me <laughs> everybody's nibs. Then he start. We can see each other. We've now moved to FaceTime. Yeah, I, I'm Apple loyal now. The world's changed. Um, Oh, but you start looking out the window as if, oh, right, when's this podcast going to end? We haven't even started well, In fairness, you didn't even know I was looking out the window because you don't know the layout of the room. And you initially thought I was just looking at a blank wall rather than talk to you. <laughs> Which actually, as you're about to say, would be more responsive. <laughs> Which has happened many times before. People, I know you people said- have flung themselves out of a window rather than talk to you. <laughs> Yeah, fortunately for me and um, for the legal profession, it was the ground floor. Yeah. <laughs> but even so, it's the principle that matters. It is. It is. Um, you say I don't know the layout, but I know the lay land eye. Oh. How the land lies. That's, that's just because I, I told him that's what I was looking at. I was just admiring my work. You know you know when you go up a... Uh, I've got this little scaffold that... Uh, don't tell John Gorman. <laughs> I've, got, I've, got this, uh, I've got this little scaffold. that uh, well, it's, well, it's quite a big scaffold, actually. You wouldn't want to fall off it. Let's put it like that. Um, to do the Leylandi to cut the because I'm such a tight one I don't want well originally it's really our last house tight, hang on what tight Leylandi tight no I'm such a tight, tight space one. to do <laughs> and in our old what can can you explain can you backtrack for the non gardeners amongst yes. us with with pink or other fingers not green ones well I haven't really but Leyland I know of the name but what do they look They're like, like are they ferns. fluffy top or like ferns, ferns, right? ferns. Well, can't you say ferns then you pretentious well, I think technically so. they are Leylandi. I don't. I don't. I mean, I'm not green finger or anything like that. Mm. I, I'm all I do is I see something and I will either cut it or, or cut or pull it out or, of the or cut it even more. <laughs> that's, that's my gardening. <laughs> two, two levels of gardening. Okay. But in our old house, we used to have like a, a staircase that had got a really high ceiling, and the only way I could decorate it was to to buy this like miniature DIY scaffolding thing. So it's not a fully blown scaffold. I thought you were going to say you climbed up the Leylandi to get to the ceiling. Sorry, I've got a fly in here now. So, no. Oh, I, th- I thought, thought you'd been very camp with your gesticulations, Matt. So, hang on. You thought I climbed up the Leylandi <laughs> in my garden and got to my old house. <laughs> Which is going to leave Narnia. Look, I, saw, no, I saw Jack and the Beanstalk as a young lad. I believed every word of it. Can Shane come out to play? Uh, no, he's in the wardrobe talking to a lion. <laughs> and strangely enough, the lion's going fee fi fo fum. I'm sure I've learnt the wrong one. I'm, I'm in the wrong one again. <laughs> Do you know, darling, that I ruddy agent. I could have done panto this year in Maidenhead. <laughs> Instead, I'm stuck here in this wretched cupboard. <laughs> so that, um, that's all it was. It was just, and I just, you know, like sometimes you think, oh, I didn't do a bad job of that actually. Okay. And uh, I was just quite, I was quite pleased. I just, it caught my attention. It wasn't that what you were saying didn't catch my attention at all. You're a, you're a very well, thrusting and dynamic man. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, look, I defy you. No, I challenge you to put up a picture of your Leylandi on our Twitter account at Comedy Slam. Because if no one listening is intrigued, and that's perfectly possible, I certainly am. Okay. So just do it for me, Lord. Well, I'll do the. Do it for I'll me. do the one that I did this year. I won't show you the one that I've had to rectify this year that the farmer did for me last year and broke two of my windows <laughs> when he did it. So <laughs> I thought you said broke two of your teeth, <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't pay him. <laughs> Mind you, with the standard of dentistry during lockdown. That's yeah. probably preferable. Anyway, we ought to put this show on the slab. So uh, if you haven't worked out already, the show is Chewing Gum. And the, had you come across the star of the show before? No. Is, is it Chewing Gum or Chewing Gum? Is it different in the south to the middle? I don't, I don't or know. Elsewhere? It's one of those where... Chewing Gum. It's, chewing, chewing Gum. St- chewing Gum. Is, it's like, did I say it wrongly? It's like Star Trek or Star Trek. No, Star Trek. Yeah, I just said Star Trek as well. But people, I know yeah. people to call it Star Trek, and you think... So it's chewing gum. Chewing gum. Did chewing I say it gum. wrongly? So you just time? said chewing gum or chewing <laughs> okay. gum. Okay. It's just, okay, well, I'm all right. I mean, it's, it's that's it, you know, it's not... A, you're now critiquing the way I pronounce the title <laughs> of the show. I'm, I don't think that's actually getting us anywhere. But 
But I can tell you, you feel smug, so that's all that it's matters. It's not a major deal. I'm just saying, can we just iron it out so we know what we're talking about? Is it chewing gum I, I, or chewing gum? I was, at, uh, I was at Sandhurst with him. Major deal. Major deal. <laughs> or was it no deal? I can't remember. <laughs> deal? No deal. Uh, and he used to uh, cough loudly uh, when he was in the audience of uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? That was pretty random. Did you see that drama? I did, yeah. It was good, uh, wasn't it? Did you enjoy it? No, I didn't see it. I didn't see no, it. No, it was good. Hopefully it's... Okay. You should watch just anyway, one episode we... of it, like you normally do. <laughs> there is only one, you rotter, isn't there? Uh, don't distract me. Oh, and we have three audio clips from uh, said show. Um, what can I say about the show? Um, from the moment I saw... Uh, it's Michaela Cole. That's her stage name, at least. Uh, she's the star of the show. From the moment... I know, back me up on this, or... Tell me if you this wasn't the case for you. Yeah. But from the moment I, I actually watched uh, the other week, which is where I picked up on it randomly on the Channel 4 app, mm. I watched episode one, series one, episode one of Chewing Gum. And uh, from the moment, virtually from the first scene, almost the first shot of the first scene, where she looks into camera and starts talking, I thought, you've written this. How did it you? It just looked like an ownership thing. Did you get that vibe early on or not? Uh, only, only in as much as because she she gets a lot of screen time and yeah i think in the in the, the kind of stuff that the what's been written is as you say very based around her isn't it mm. yeah and it is quite autobiographical i mean it's very is funny it? i did know it was autobiographical yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, okay yeah um, um she was raised in um uh east london working class background immigrant um parents although she might have only been raised by a single mum i'm not sure but um yeah Ghan- Ghanaian, isn't it yeah yeah had that air of authenticity for me obviously you can't reveal much before we've heard the first clip mm. well that that is the premise of the show at least i have to guess whether you're going to like it and i'm pretty sure i hope i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure it I don't think it's going to be your thing. Well, you, I didn't. Cho- I honestly didn't choose it for that reason. You said that last week, didn't you? I mean, you were quite. I mean, that was mm. kind of when you. Oh, I don't know. You're going to get on with this kind of thing, but um, here it is. But yeah. Um, so you still think you're still it. having sat through it again? You still think definitely? <laughs> well, I don't know. No, I, I'm hoping you're going to pleasantly surprise me because um, Look, it might not be... We all have to go outside of our comfort zones every now and again, and that's the point of the slab. And I was in two minds as to whether even to, to, to even um, suggest it, as I think I said last week. Oh, I don't know. You're putting me, uh, you're putting me um, on the spot here. Because um, sometimes we even go to the point of trying to guess the other person's score line. Mm. No, you see, because you liked Ideal, didn't you? Which is set in it's a, it's a working class setup. It's it's people on the edge, isn't it? Sort of wastrels in a way. Mm. I like that old term. I, uh, I selected. Actually, yeah. I I suggested Ideal, didn't I? I think you did indeed. Yeah, as a fan, I mean, you you followed it through seven series for goodness' sake. Nine, sense, I think you? it was. <sighs> nine. That's German for no. And, and nine series, and I still didn't figure out Ideal. Because he was a drug dealer. It took years to tell <laughs> You don't me. have to go back there. You don't have to... I mean, I love the fact that I'm still making you squirm. Don't sleep. It. But, I don't um, sleep some nights. I wake up <laughs> I wake up screaming the nights screaming. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not ideal, as we all know. Exactly, yeah. Um, Come on, hurry up, because we're going to have to go. Well, okay, okay, okay. okay. Well, okay, I'm, I'm talking myself. <laughs> You've got to tend to your Leylander. Yeah. And that's not a euphemism. He's grown another six foot um, one, been chatting. I know. <laughs> As has your stubble. Uh, oh, gosh, it could go the other way, couldn't it? Oh, no. Let's call it... Uh, I'm going to go for three and a half. I don't quite believe my own prediction, but I have no other idea. I've got no better idea. Okay. <clears throat> so you might you might actually quite like it. Should, I've talked myself out of the initial Should we have a, should we have a clip and I'll, uh, and I'll give you a headline yeah. after, straight after that, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. I just thought of a brilliant headline. Oh. Even if I do you say so myself. Already. <laughs> well, we'll be the judge of that, yeah. won't we, dear listener? <laughs> right. Um, now, this is where I'm lousy at setting things up. I said to myself, I must write a setup so that I smoothly lead in to the first audio clip. And what haven't I done today? Write a setup I so haven't. that you lead smoothly yeah, into exactly. the first audio exactly, clip. Exactly. 
So uh, essentially, I mean, this is series one, episode three. So we've hit, hit the ground running. Anyway, I chose this bit because, I mean, you got me into this. Choosing a clip very early on in an episode very often sets up that episode. So she's looking, as we sort of hinted at, straight into camera. So she is narrating to you, the viewer, and uh, telling us what she'd do with... Uh, with a with a windfall but the gag here i've got to fill in the visuals the gag here is that there's some crime being committed behind her mm. so bear that in mind when she says what she says a bit later on in this clip here's tracy from chewing gum if i had a thousand pound i'll buy brazilian yaki hair like yance uh, lip reduction red velvet cupcakes Probably a dustpan and brush for this place. I mean, look at it, it's boring. There's not even crime here. So that's on fake ass estate. It's like Diet Cola. It's diluted. So I forget the dustpan. I buy a train ticket and I just get out. Yeah, because I am trying to do something worthwhile while I'm alive, you know what I mean? And these brick walls, they're dragging me back, man. Yeah, I'm like a rose, trying to grow out of mud. I was born a big thinker. I'm very wise, you know? My mind is bare agile. I'm fast, you know what I mean? Yeah, I got my ear to the ground, so I'm alert at all times. Tracy! I ain't even being vain. I just am special. Tracy! Just keep breathing now. Just keep breathing properly. What? Boog ass is shining here a day. I'm a bit busy right now, you know? It was, it, do you know, it was odd because I, did, I didn't really, even the second time I watched it, because we watch it twice, don't we, to mm. um, sort of sit and, and write notes. I do it second time round, but um, I I couldn't figure out what was going on. Whether they were stealing stuff or moving stuff because the police had arrived, or and it was straight into that scene. And I'm thinking, I'm on like three minutes in, I haven't really got the first clue what's going on. And it was only because I read the background, and she she's her character is supposed to be Beyonce obsessed, isn't she? I think is one of the that's why she Beyonce and Jesus it says. Although that I think the latter changes. <laughs> oh, does it? Okay, because it only got two okay. series, didn't it? I think it was it, was, it didn't get a third series. Yeah, um, this is from um, 2015. Um, Passed me by at the time. I confess. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I mean, we'll we'll uh, who it's for. We'll come to a bit later on. Maybe that's why it passed us by. Perhaps because it's the same for me as well. Really. Um, mm. But yeah, so in terms of, and, and I know we we're kind of what is that? That's episode three, isn't it? Of series episode one. three of series one. So I know we're kind of thrown in. We're, we're kind of going halfway through the through the series kind of thing. But I did sit there for a moment thinking, oh, I really got a clear what's going on here now. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Um, and I wasn't any better the second time round. Sorry, you were going to say? Oh no, yeah. Well, I suppose I should possibly apologise for the fact that. You know, I'd seen series one, episode one. I should arguably have given that to you as the homework, right? And to um, our listeners, although that, that wouldn't have helped, would it really? Headspace. Like that scene where they're all they're taking the stuff out of the flat because there's two coppers coming, and and I remember sitting there thinking, so what are they? And then the second time I watched it, I'm thinking, right, are there any clues for the two things that I'm thinking? And as I say, it was I was thinking, are they stealing from that flat, or are they moving stolen goods because they know that the coppers are coming to the to the flat kind of thing? I didn't really know. Anyway, do you want my headline? Should I give me a headline? Yeah, please do. My headline is. <clears throat> Are you ready for this? Are you yawning through the headline? No, are you ready? Or was that an <coughs> I, was, <your> <coughs> I was clearing my throat so I didn't muff up my headline. That's <coughs> Here we go. <coughs> are you ready for this? Better get it right. My chewing gum lost its flavour on the bedpost overnight. <laughs> oh, no. I suppose I'm not shocked, given <laughs> that it was going to be one end of the spectrum. But a very good headline, obviously. I, I can't, Although um, you've only just thought of it by your own confession. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't say that I hated it. Do you know, I was kind of re I spent a lot of time bewildered. And and indifferent, but not. I didn't. I didn't kind of. At the end, it was really odd because at the end of it, I didn't think. You know, it's like sometimes you think, well, that's half an hour. I'll never get back, or an hour. You know, second time round, mm. you think it's still got no better. Um, but I didn't have any of that. I didn't. I didn't feel that at all. I just kind of felt like it just phew, like I was an old man, and I didn't really understand what was going on around me, sort of thing. What did you? What do you mean, like? <laughs> yeah, true. Tell me what you made of it. Well, I love it. I I was hoping. I mean, perhaps you've at least said you didn't. Where's the effect? Uh, you didn't think it was a complete waste of time, or you weren't thinking that's half an hour. You won't get back. Did you at least see 
I mean, she's got, for me, amazing presence as an actor. She, I mean, obviously, she's centre frame, she's narrating to camera, so it sounds a bit odd to say you can't ignore her. You're not meant to be able to ignore the star of a show. But my word, I couldn't take my eyes off her. I mean, she's in every frame of every scene. You know, just uh, this really strong presence. Could you at least credit that? No, I didn't feel that at all. I didn't. I didn't get it at all. Um, I. I mean, in terms of in terms of the writing and in terms of the the, the comedy, I mean that the, the the scene that you saw at the start there that you you had that clip from, which is how long was that clip? About a minute and ten, was it or something? Yeah, we choose clip, clips around a minute. I cheat. I, I go over a minute usually. One minute ten, something like that. Yeah, one, one no more than one twenty. But but that I mean really basically the joke was, you know I'm really quite vigilant and I'm not you know I've got my eye on the ball and all this is going on mm. behind her and even when they call her she still doesn't and that was the kind of the gag, and I felt it was yeah. it was kind of a lot of of that kind of um, was it last week we were talking about that kind of humour um, uh, with only fools and horses I think it was it was this kind of humour where it was kind of that that was the level it was. It was sort of pitched up for me, you know. It was the when you say this kind, you mean a person who is unaware of that they, they think they're one thing, but we know they're not. No, that kind of level of comedy. I mean, it's not it's not what you would call sophisticated. It's interesting you brought up Ideal because I always found the characters in Ideal to be really quite intelligent and articulate. Mm. So, although as you rightly say, it was you know it was set in. Um, not the best rented flat you would ever wish to live in looking at it and probably not the mm. nicest area because obviously he's a drug dealer but there was always there was always something that you could say as a character they were written with um intelligence i suppose intelligence is intelligence the right word but do you know what i mean they're kind of there was always something that i could i could relate to or 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 grasp with the character mm. and that kind of made it relatable and okay. But I, I really struggled with any, I couldn't, I couldn't actually hook on to any of the characters in that sense. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm, I'm disappointed. Um, I won't say I'm shocked. I mean, uh, I've kind of laid the ground on that earlier, but I don't know if I would say I found them relatable, but I could at least, I knew what they were meant to be in their part in the plot. I thought it was a good, strong performances um, all round. I just found it so inventive and fresh and creative. And do you think it has London resonances? <laughs> I knew you'd say no, that. No, do you think though? And I just maybe it's because oh, I'm a cockney. <laughs> um, I <laughs> you yeah, iron at me. I'm iron at you. I will don't iron at me. Have some welts. Um, <laughs> I mean that, and I don't, and I, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to be divisive. Well, you but- do talk, you do talk as if London's another country. It and is. In one sense, it, it. Well, if I may be allowed to finish, Prime Minister. Sorry. It is, and it isn't. It is. <laughs> it's only a train ride away. You really, it, it is not on the dark side of the moon. I don't think it's as culturally different as you make out. What were you saying the other week? That was a funny one. Oh, I don't think these people. It was uh, um, Marcus Brigstock's character in uh, the Wills to Save the World. I don't think these people would exist outside of no. London, I don't. You said in a brummy. Yeah, accent. I was going to say I always talk like that when I'm criticising <laughs> London. Don't I? You do. You do when I'm when I'm impersonating. Yeah. You. Um, um, basically, I can't do any other accents, you know, because I've never been outside the M25. You, you say it's but it's um, only a train ride away, but it's not. It's not geographically. Is it? It is. It is a. It's, it's cultural, yeah, but, culturally. But, the, but but hang on, there's uh, look. This is not Marcus Brigstock territory, is it? So what that means is there are many many subcultures in London, as there are across the UK. Let me give you another example. W one A. Could you see W one A being set anywhere, even within the BBC, being set anywhere outside of London? I, it just wouldn't work because well, I, those are no. The- but, but that is specific. W one A is a postcode in London, so the clues in the title. No, I know, I but I mean, you can- yeah, but I, I'm, you know what I mean. I mean the characters and the well, and the kind of the creative types and the, oh, lovely is he and all these kind of people, you know. Yeah, but that's nothing like our chewing gum types, is it? No, and it, it, and and they are closer to the ideal types that you. 
seem to feel much more well no because i mean there there is the there there is there's two types of london isn't there? there's what we in in the in the midlands call the notting hill style london and then there's what we call what we see in the news the stabby london you know and i love i love love the way you speak for the entire west Midlands. no i speak for the entire midlands mate because (laughs) i i'm so sorry including derby where we met yeah okay uh, right. I, well, your ego is even more inflated than I gave you credit for. I'm so sorry. I've got a note here. Uh, hang on. Hang on. A five pound note. Hey, look. It says. What's that say? Please allow Shane to talk on our behalf. <laughs> our behalf, Loik. Loik. L O I K E. Well, um, clearly you're doing that, and uh, it's nice to know that, uh, that you're fulfilling your brief now, for them. Although, hang, yeah. hang on, so we're just getting into a row about London, though, which I don't want to do. But, but what I'm saying is, oh, I do. Is that don't you think you know? Because I'm armed. <laughs> Usually, you're all like that in London. Leave it. I'm a geezer. Leave it, Adrian. Leave it. I will nick them. I will nick them. <laughs> do, do you think that this has this has a kind of this play, this would play better in? In London, do you think? I don't know. I don't know. Well, hang on, hang on. If I said to you, well, as I have done in the past, or um, or I've said, oh, um, you know, this this is uh, set in the nineteen sixties, and if you're young, you might not get it. Your first thing is Google it, mm. and the other thing is, well, you know, just do a bit of research. Or Hilary Mantel has made a career out of writing about hundreds of years ago. So, I mean, do a bit of homework, and. I can't imagine that this doesn't play outside of London in answer to your question, if I understood your question correctly. Because mm. people will see people going... I mean, you could say this is the Del Boy of the 21st century. It's a bit of ducking and diving. It's people haven't got a lot of money, so they find other ways to ad-lib around it. And, you know, they might, uh, they might go the wrong side of the law at times and then they'll come back in and... I mean, surely there are people who can identify with this outside of London. Yeah, maybe. maybe there are. I mean, I'm just saying this. This is, you know, I don't know. I, I, I'm just grasp, grasping at straws because I don't know why I didn't, you know, really kind of connect with it. But I didn't, I didn't feel like connected with it and and struggled mm. struggled throughout. With um, I didn't laugh very much in it as well, which for a comedy program that is kind of really where you want it. That's that's the ground you want to be aiming for, isn't it? Really. Of course, but then I did laugh, so it's, we're, we're left with the question: Why did I find it and funny, and you didn't? I thought at least you'd you'd kind of see the strength of her performance, but clearly you haven't been convinced there, which is a shame. But it's what it is. I, I, yeah, I felt it was very. It was played very large, wasn't it? I mean, there's no, oh, yeah, no question about that. But come on, if I said only fools and horses, all. Is that played large or not large? You see, that's not you see, a deal breaker, no, is no, it? No, that's interesting because you 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 think that with David Jason because you said you always think he kind of overacts. Yeah, the rubber yeah. rubber feet. And I've and never that. felt yeah. that about him at all. No, I, I I think that I think that comes down to the gut feeling. You like his character. I like her character. I th- see. Oh, I think it's more to do with that. I find, as I said to you, I find his characters quite believable. And and whereas you don't, I don't think. And well, I did wonder. I did wonder. Is it because I didn't move in those circles? And you might think that's really snotty, but you know, I I didn't move amongst people, you know, working on market stalls. But I don't know that you did as a youth. Maybe you did. Maybe you didn't. I mean, we went to the market. I went to Warsaw Market we once. <laughs> Admittedly, it was on a Wednesday and it was closed, but. <laughs> Half day closing. Oh, you should have worked that out for yourself. Full day closing. Full day. That's where they took me. <laughs> right. I thought of going. That's the, lazy. That go is. in the morning. I thought exactly that's what they're like in Warsaw. They, you can't. You can't trust them. That, I thought if I go in the morning, end, isn't yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd clobber it. You know, but uh, they no. just don't need the money. That's what it yeah. is. Flaunt, fl- flaunting, flaunting, <laughs> flaunting their wealth. Yeah. Or flouting it. I, I did laugh in places. Um, uh, what I thought you said you didn't laugh. Th- um, no, I just saw something in my notes that, that oh. there was when she was selling perfume and they had to name the perfume. <laughs> and that was because. Well, we're going to hear that. Let, let let's go into the second clip because you're nice. I kind of relate to that. that. That's something I've always thought, and it, that's what kind of made me laugh. Then, really, I suppose. So, so you know, it's oh, not all. Well, let's that. hear it then. Okay, so essentially. Um, 
the star of the show, uh, Tracy, this character name, of course, uh, she has a, a wonderful job uh, working in a confectioner's behind the till. But she's, she, um, one of her customers is a, a mate from, well, not so much a mate, but someone she hasn't seen for a couple of years who realises they were at school together a couple of years behind her, actually. Mm. Um, but beautifully dolled up. Whether she would actually go into a confectioner's, let's park that thought. But anyway, um, this beautifully um, dolled up lady who was at her school um, works in the perfume section of, I think it's a department store, isn't it, really? Maybe it's a concession within a department That's store. That's the impression I got, it was a department store, yeah, yeah. Yeah, But she's beautifully coiffured, which um, Tracy comments on. And uh, she also happens to say, well, there's some jobs going. Would you like to, to as in effect, have a tryout, a sort of an interview, but on the shop floor where you try to to um, sell perfume, in effect? So the, her first words, Tracy's first words in this second clip are, that's just her rehearsing a little bit under her breath to herself. But then we, we get one or two potential customers, or are they? Welcome to... Winsley Cosmetics. How are you doing, madam? Would you like to try this nice perfume? This is actually our latest release, yeah. Your husband will love this one, and mine does. Welcome to Winsley Cosmetics. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Winsley Cosmetics. Would you like to try this? It's Hello, perfume! P perfume! Okay, so, um, what we try to do at Winsley is um, create an inviting atmosphere for the clients. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello. Welcome to Wincy Cosmetics. Your husband will love me. Mine does. No, I said that wrong. I uh, said that. Ah. Uh. <clears throat> what is it? Perfume. The brand. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh. Yeah, it's called, uh, you know me, yo de pum pum. Enemies Iran. Yeah, me ho ho, yeah, de pum pum yum. Enemies Iran. Oh, my God, you ain't even saying the whole thing, though. Enemies Iran, a de parfum. Look. No one in this country is going to buy this. Don't say perfume. How are they going to know it's perfume? That... Good point. I'll, um... I'll make a note of that. Cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, to Big Boss. You tell him Tracy said it. What was it? What? Yeah. Eau, de, eau de perfume de pom pom, was it? Or something? The, the pom pom. The pom -pom. <laughs> 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 and the other line that I really liked as well was, was it your, your husband... Or love, love me, mine does, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got that wrong. Yeah, it's quite good. Yeah. I, I tell you what it was about the character. I was just having to think while we were playing the clip there. Mm -hmm. And what it is about the character, and this is not the actress, because I don't know the actress. I, I've never seen her in anything else. But the character, I felt, wasn't very likable. She, she was, she's kind of feckless, but had no self awareness. And, and it was, it was, only because we did it last week, only fools and horses. You you could never say that about Del Boy, could you? You could say that Del Boy was could have, he was feckless, but he kind of knew he was feckless and tried to hide it and tried to be better than he was. And and that kind of awareness was endearing, but that's why I couldn't really get on with the character was because I, I just kind of thought you don't you. you you think you're great, but you're not, and you're not smashing it, and you're not, you know. There's that kind of, that kind of sort of bleak lack of self awareness is is. Yeah, but but that can be very funny. I mean, come on. I know you have said on the slab that uh, the last series you felt went a bit off, but Alan Partridge, the joke is his lack of self awareness. So it's not like you hate all characters that don't. Have a self awareness. No, I think, I think. Uh, I mean, the the bits of comedy I've done for my own solo project podcast. I, when I when I stand back from them, as I try to and think, what's the common theme? It is lack of self awareness that can be incredibly funny because we we're in on the joke as viewers or listeners. I I think I don't know. It just felt like a really arrogant. Lack of self awareness. That's that's what I kind of. I just. But she but she does all the pratfalls though, doesn't she? I mean, yeah. She's not making herself look good. I mean, she looks I, a right old ninny I, later and on. And that's the disconnection, isn't it? Because you kind of think, how can you be that bad and think that you're that good? It's it's too the step is but there are the step there are is too like far. That. And I think that's the difference with Partridge. I think it's incremental. It it isn't this massive void between, you know. 
the the way you behave and the way that you think you behave i think that the, the narrower that gap the funnier it is and the more believable it is and i will have to go away and chew over I, that. that's i've been thinking about it all week because i kind of thought I, why why is it i didn't i didn't kind of it was because she's a female character that i couldn't i couldn't connect with her but i just i don't know i just couldn't it just didn't didn't it didn't hit home for me. I don't know why. I don't know why. But that's the only thing I can think is that's how I felt at the time. The mm. the void between the two was too great. Okay. I could be talking out my hat, so be careful. You could be, or other parts. You never know. There are other parts I've um, talked to, yeah. <laughs> anyway, it is a retort, he retorted. It's a retort production for Channel 4, so you'll find it on the All 4 app. I think... Date may be open-ended. I mean, it certainly survived since 2015, so it's a good chance it might not have a sort of um, self-destruct date. Uh, and there is a second series. And guess what? I am going to watch more episodes. I have to. I've already watched two in the same series, which, as you know, for me, is pretty amazing. It is a curious thing as well. It, it got all these, mm. these, this critical acclaim. And and mm. it did garner a lot of critical acclaim, and you kind of think, well, I'm, again, it just makes you wonder why you you why I wasn't I didn't really hear about it. It's what it's mm. won BAFTAs and all sorts, hasn't it? I think this, but but I, you're more across that than I am. I, I'm and I missed it at the time, so I've it's certainly been nominated late. for a BAFTA if it, if it didn't win one. Yeah. Um, but then only got two series. It, they, they turned down the option on a third series, and you kind of think that's something not right there, is there? You know. I don't know whether it got critical acclaim, but didn't get audience acclaim, and maybe that's why it didn't kick into it. I don't know. I, I haven't really dug into the reviews, but in other settings, of course, to get a second series is actually a plus because some some shows don't make it that far. Some shows don't make it beyond a pilot, mm -hmm. and some shows don't even get that. So um, two series is 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 not bad, but. Um, I've got a feeling. I mean, she's an all-rounder. Um, she's described as a playwright, poet. She's clearly she's a singer, songwriter as, as well, well as actually, writer. I think. Just, yeah, I that. she might be spreading herself too thinly, but she's certainly very, very talented. Every every time I saw her on screen, I I, I thought, wow. I think she, you know, when people um, bow and scrape uh, over Phoebe Waller Bridge, she's certainly talented, and um, I enjoyed Fleabag, mm. but I actually think. I think uh, Michaela Cole is a potentially a superior talent, or certainly more of an all-rounder. That's not to denigrate Phoebe Waller-Bridge. She's definitely talented, but I just... Uh, well, either of their styles could burn out quite soon. Um, maybe Michaela... I don't know whether she's... Obviously, we're in lockdown as we speak, but um, I, I think I would, I would never discount her coming up back with a bigger project next time mm. or, or surprising us with a totally different direction they do this it's, though that's too much time this kind of like the, the, you know the, the press isn't it largely they just go nuts on one person like you say phoebe waller bridge they go, oh was, you know she was going to be the next um queen or whatever um mm. and olivia coleman they did the same with her didn't they it was like you know she everything she did was just absolutely amazing you know you think, well, she only went down the shops um, and and uh, the, the, there's this need to do this. We can't just we can't just say yeah these people are great without them being superlative in some way. It's it's mm. a weird thing. Is that a British thing? I don't know. I don't know. It's probably the same with the world over, isn't it? I guess it's probably it's probably a human thing. And um, I always um, trot out my old line, which is uh, we we forget what the word fan is short for, and it's fanatic. Mm. So. I know I've I've been there as well, so I can't really look down my nose, you know, get, go mad about one thing. Certainly, when I was younger, it was easier to, and then it burns itself out after a few weeks or something. And you think, oh, maybe they weren't quite as good as I thought they were. I thought it was short for funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, since we're going to have an explicit rating anyway, um, that may or may not make the cut or. Something that sounds like it. Right, shall we go to the third and final clip before the all-important scores on the doors, Miss Ford? Yes. I do need to <laughs> explain. <laughs> Thank you. There's a whole subplot that we haven't even got into, which is male appendages in plastic form. And uh, did you like... There's a visual reference to... Um, I'm just going to do the... 
I can't even bring myself to say it. But anyway, it was a, a hand on a an arm in the context of male appendages oh, yeah, for yeah, yeah. female pleasure. Yeah. I just thought that was a nice throwaway. Um, anyway, if you're over 18, you will see that if you're watching the show. Um, anyway, so that goes on. And uh, I, th- I thought either I've got to dive into that with the audio clips or either get into it and explain all of it or not get into it at all. But I've, I've cowered it out. But there's another sub- subplot, which is a, a drug subplot, Another reason it gets um, an, an 18 certificate from Channel 4. Um, whereby, and, and, and the interesting thing is, her character doesn't push back against someone in the shop. Okay, she's obviously failed the perfume audition. We heard that. Mm. We're not surprised by that. Um, although they don't tell her in, instantly. But, um, but then uh, a, a white guy working at the store, who's a posh boy, assumes she's a, a drug dealer. I mean, we come back to Ter- ideal terrible stereotyping here. there, wasn't it? How, well, but, having but, the posh, but, but she's written it, and she, no, well, having yes, the posh, the posh the white black, boy, the as, black person being the drug as the, person, as the coke fiend. <laughs> that was what I was thinking. Well, but she didn't push back against. Uh, I'm black, therefore you must assume I'm a drug dealer. Um, so she goes with it. Basically, he, he stuffs a load of money down her top. So um, I think that if that was me, I'd fall into line. Anyway, so she, um, without questioning, she supplies them with the necessary for an evening out. Um, but as you might have gathered, she wants to meet the big boss, the guy who owns the department store. It's like the young Mr. Grace, who isn't very young. who's uh, got this not very well-fitting suit. Anyway, so when she's trying to sort of um, clink on the deal, the drug deal, in what looks like the gents' toilets, which is an added oddity, do you think it's the gents' toilets she ends up I in? I thought it was, yeah. Look, 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 yeah. Look, the lighting Well, shift. it's business, yeah. isn't it? Yes. In a nice club. So anyway, um, but she downs, she downs some of her own merchandise, shall we say, some of her merch, and uh, with predictably comic uh, effects, well... I think they're even bigger than you you might have anticipated. She basically she's off her face, and um, that's possibly not the best state in which to meet the big boss or to be at their all important evening do. I'm Tracy, and I want to say a few words. I used to want to be in you lot's gang, but now I see this lifestyle for what it really is. It's just greed. It's just money. I mean, wouldn't you rather have friends and, and people that love you? I would, instead of a bunch of people who judge me. I mean, none of you know what I am capable of. None of you know me. You just think you do. And it's pathetic the way you judge me. It's pathetic. But at the same time, I do really feel like we really get on. I don't want to go so you mind. I go home now. It's shut the- Oh, big boss. No. A big boss. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, Tracy. Mm. Tracy. Mm. Tracy. Mm. You're having a bad trip. There's going to be an attack. Uh, there's going to be a ter- ter- terrorist attack. But okay. the thing is, listen to me, because it's just important. It is not the, the Muslims. It's the people of Scotland. It's... That the first bit. You, I'm laughing. Won't you join? Yeah, me? the first bit was, uh, which I thought was quite good, was um, uh, was what she thought she was saying, but then with all the gibberish yes. was what she was actually saying, which was quite nice. Um, a bit, little bit predictable there. I, I mean, I, I'm trying to think where else have I seen that? And on my travels and research to try and figure out where I saw it, I found a, a top ten list of accidentally getting high in movie scenes. Um, okay. So, are you going to treat us to some? So, I didn't bother looking them up, but I just got, suffice to say, yeah, it's a device. It's a well, it's, it's a well worn path, isn't it? I suppose in that sense, but there's nothing wrong with that, is there? Um, but yeah, again, you know, a lot of physical comedy, isn't there? In this, um, mm. more than you probably. There's a lot in in her face. I would say, yeah, She's such a such a presence as I keep saying, but more than you would first realize at first glance wouldn't it really i think it's only when you come to sort of scrutinize it you realize that there is quite a lot of uh physical comedy is is episode one like that as well is it is is that is that kind of true to form or is, is this isn't you're you're assuming i can remember that yes far back. yes um i'm not very good with uh 
with uh, a total recall. It's partial recall at best. But it had the same kind of um, feel, did it? I mean, is that when you watch when you watched episode three, you didn't know, oh, this is nothing like episode one that I watched before. No, 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 it, it's no, the same no. kind of feel. Uh, I was trying to remember. Yeah, a lot of sexual references again, which is why it gets slapped with a sort of eighteen plus cert. But um, it, it was an interesting twist um, on s- sexual politics, sexual norms, in my view. That probably almost certainly means you wouldn't have enjoyed it in the way I did, mm. but hey. Mm. But yeah, it's not, it's not a massive gear change. She, I mean, she is, she's ploughing her furrow. It's her background, so it's not, I don't think it's suddenly going to go off to the rings of Saturn or anything. Um, it, it, that's what it is. It didn't give me the same set of emotions that I had when, we, when I watched... Um the Wilsons save the world. Or heard. Or heard, heard rather, yeah. Radio yeah. show, but yeah. yeah. Is it on, it's on our instinct. Facebook page, I don't know if you saw this, Adrian Bailey. Hi, Adrian, who who um, listens to the Comedy Slab. Uh, he said, I was intrigued mainly by Shane's somewhat visceral dislike of the show. This is talking about the Wilsons <laughs> save, the, save the world. All right, yeah. He said, I thought it was okay, a bit worthy perhaps. Plenty of fun poked at the subject. Even C- Caitlin Moran got in on the act. Shane described what he, she said as rubbish. I'd be interested to know exactly what he thought was rubbish. I was going to write replies, you know, and I thought oh, it's <laughs> never—you can never—it never comes across very well. That—that that, I mean, I, I kind of—I felt like I was being preached to. Now, this is the answer for Adrian and for you as well. With with that sh- another Adrian. with that show, do you know what I mean? With with this, I didn't have that. That I kind of this. It was a sense of this is how it is. This is what I'm portraying. And I didn't feel like I was being looked down upon or preached to or judged or anything like that by by the show. And that's why I felt completely different about it. Whereas, um, you know, when you get Caitlin Moran, it's, it's, the only thing I say to, to Adrian Bailey, who, who, who wrote on the Facebook page, mm. if you imagine a comedy show and they got Nigel Farage on to talk about what he believes in a comedic way, Imagine how you'd feel about that. That's how I'd feel about Caitlin Moran coming on and, and espousing her beliefs. I, th- I think Nigel Farage is, is naturally comedic, but I, I would have him down as unaware. But hey, Do you know what I mean? Um, but, and that's, so that's, that's kind of the way I felt. But, but with this, okay. I didn't... There wasn't a... It, it, I don't know. There was. I came away from it thinking, oh, okay, you know. I didn't enjoy it, but... I, 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 I kind of got the feeling it wasn't for me anyway. Well, you said you wanted to discuss this. Uh, do you think it's only for the London area then? It's only for London only area for or environs. And if your name's Adrian, I think that that's... <laughs> Bailey or Lacey. Yeah, Bailey or Lacey, yeah. You did a Donald Trump where he, where he pinches his thumb and his first thing... This is this is such a such a London based show. It's so left leaning. <laughs> terribly left leaning. Terribly left leaning. I don't not for me. I, not for I me. I don't I don't yeah, I don't uh, I don't know. I don't, who do you think it's for? Anyone who wants to I don't know who um Anyone who wants some has, you, anyone who has a heart. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, well, I, I want to answer that in the way that ca- causes maximum distress to you, of course, and makes you choke on your purple, which you're drinking while I'm talking. Um, who's it for? Younger, younger people than us, do you think? Well, I managed to enjoy it, and I'm not younger than me. Profoundly, though, I might wish I were. But do, you, do you think you just Would enjoyed it because were? you're refusing to, to self-identify? To, to not enjoy it. <laughs> To not to not self-identify as a Ghanaian East Londoner. You, no, you because you you, <laughs> you don't want to you don't want to admit that you're as old as you are, and you're thinking, well, if I like this, then people will think. Do you think I'm like a dad dancer, sort of dancing with the young comedies? Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Hey, young comedy. Oh, thanks. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! I'm wearing plaid <laughs> yeah. and combat combat uh, pants. Um, well, maybe I've got more of an open mind than you, or is that what a smug? Lefty sandal wearing Guardian reading Londoner. You see, say. I didn't get any of that. You was when you were saying about oh, this is all about women empowering and doing it for themselves and all that sort of stuff. And, mm. I, and I thought well, I didn't get any of that vibe from this. Well, that that was more episode one. Oh, okay. To be honest, okay. it was women being assertive in bed. Shall one say? Right. What you mean saying it's my turn to snore? That kind of thing. 
yeah, that sort of thing. Get that and I'm keeping my curlers in. Yeah. <laughs> um, I had to say, I made myself laugh, and I was, I was looking, I was looking her up. She went to university in uh, Birmingham. Did you see that? She went to Birmingham University. No, no, I it was quite that. nice. Um, oh, but nice. in Wikipedia, it says, although she still considers herself a Christian, Cole stopped practicing Pentecostalism after attending Guildhall, and she now publicly identifies as, and I thought that it said aromatic. <laughs> Aramaic? A, a, no, aroma- no a, that's a romantic. A rom- what without a space between the a and the romantic? Yeah, it's kind of a bit like asexual. I think it's like, but but more more romantic rather than sexual. She's a romantic. Well, I saw an I saw an that's an oh, that's new to me. Mm. I saw an interview where I thought she was saying she'd fallen off the Christian bandwagon. I don't think she does identify as a Christian. No, that's what that's what uh, they said is that she stopped practicing uh, Pentecostalism. No, no, but I don't. But you, you said oh, she, she still, still considers herself, herself a Christian. Christian yeah. considered, I don't think she does um, because she didn't like the church's view or the ambiguity as she, as she sees it about uh, gay people. Well, know, Pente- Pentecostalism is quite quite hard line, isn't it? Well, oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. it's not for the faint-hearted. I mean, it makes us Catholics, no, and I'm talking about my side of the table here. It makes us Catholics yeah. seem like a bit of a wet weekend in Bognor, doesn't it, really? Yeah. We're, you know, a bit limperistic compared to the Pentecostalism, you know. They're... Oh, they, they uh, yeah. Well, um, we get into Trumpian politics, perhaps. Yeah. Or should we move on deftly before that? I just thought it was wonderful issue. that she she self identified as she publicly identifies as aromatic. I thought, well, that'd be nice because she'd always have that nice smell about the place anyway. I did make myself chuckle for an hour with that one. <laughs> but I've never come. <laughs> yeah, and then you then you read it correctly. Yes. I've never come across that term, but she doesn't. I mean, I wouldn't assume from the show. She actually says. Um, in that speech where we hear what she thinks she's coming across that she's saying don't you want to be loved or where's that yeah. effect which is quite romantic and i'm i'm daft enough to think as a character that she's written herself that might be quite autobiographical it's some of her voice in it yeah yeah i, I, yeah, yeah, I think you're right yeah. i would th- i would feel the same she, as well uh, yeah well maybe that's just plain wrong or she was having an off day and she was uh, uh, trying to put them off the scent very quickly Big um, shout out, as I believe the youngsters say, because I'm wearing dad combat pants, mm. even though I'm not a dad. Daniel Walters, who also goes by the name of Daniel, well, is it Isai? Her friend Candice, that's the character name, Candice. Right. Uh, just wonderful actor, I think. Just wonderful comic, um, com- uh, funny bones, I would say, as I would say for Michaela Cole as well. I mean, you just look at them, and they're the deadpan look, and it just gets me chuckling. I've only got to see a photo of them, a still, and I think, I'm in. And uh, amazingly funny women, for me, just right up my... Alley. Funny, f- funny Ali G. <laughs> anyway, always, um, shall we wrap it up? I was, I was thinking that's a comedic phrase, isn't it, right up my alley? I think whenever you use that, you can always, you can always guarantee a titter somewhere in the house, can't you? Don't you think? <laughs> well, you do hope for a titter, yes. yes. Uh, for now, for now. As they say in Viz. Um, it must be the time for the scores on the doors. Miss Ford, yeah. You or me? Uh, you, I think, isn't it? Do you want to go? I feel like I've I got go. a second guess you, though. Well, I'm going to now because I didn't. Well, I said three and a half earlier. It's now sounding like a two for you at best. Ooh. Ooh. I've never known you give a two and a half. Have Ooh. I? Again, it's it's the extremes. It's the four or the two. I don't know. I, n- or worse. I, never, I never write them down separately, do I? should do that, shouldn't I, one of the days? But uh, You should do. Never, you should do, like every, every day. day. Um, yeah, and I haven't even thought what I'd give it. I'm going to give it four. It's got to be four. Um, because, well, for all the reasons, four going. Uh, four going. Channel four. Okay. Oh, forget it. I, Please yourself. I won't go over old ground. Uh, one and a an half for me. Oh, Sars. You're so mean. Just no. Yeah, Sars. No, I just, if you're that sorry, give it at least no, two. No, I mean, I just... You're not sorry. I wish you, sorry, not sorry. I'm sorry, not sorry. I wish you all the best <laughs> uh, as a... Oh. As a, as a Pat- patronising dad speak. No, it isn't. I don't, I don't wish you... You know, like I say, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't come away with any sense of... You know, having a finger poked in my chest, or you better enjoy this. Or whatever. I just kind of thought. I looked at it and I thought, mm, I'm in the wrong room. So, who do you think it's for then? You think it's a younger? I think it's a young, it's much younger. Mostly le- London. Yeah, I, I, the London thing. I think is just because where it's set and the fact that she she was born in London. I thought it was quite interesting because again on Wikipedia, um, they describe her as a Ghanaian British actress. Mm. So does that, well, she was born in London, so that means that I'm an Irish-British 
broadcaster then? My, my I dad. don't have a problem with that. Do you have a problem? No, with being I've, I've or never or thought to describe myself as that. I've always thought I've always thought that because I was born in Warsaw, I just you know I should just expect yeah, but, all the bad fortune that comes my way. <laughs> yeah, but you get on top of that, you get the bad fortune that Irish people get in Britain. Surely that you just got to embrace it. I'm part Scots, you know. I'm self persecutory. Right? I Do you describe yourself it. as a Scottish British layabout? Well, you don't need to say Scottish British because Scottish is British, oh, yeah, yeah. unless, of course, you're a yeah, nationalist sorry, yeah, and yeah. exceptionalist. Yeah, yeah I, f- so, I forgot. Um, although that will, slightly different. That'll soon change, won't it? But yeah, well. Uh, but well, yeah, yes. If Nicola Spurgeon gets and then away, we'll see what's what. Um, <laughs> well, will we? Uh, it, it will just run and run. We know that. But I have to say, every time I saw the Northern Irish drunk, a little part of me thought. That's Shane, that is. They're yeah, racist, isn't it? Is you that, know, portraying the Irish as drunks again. Here we go with the old stereotypes. <laughs> it's a bit. It's usually the Scots or the Scots who are portrayed as drunks. Offensive, but there you go. You know that was. Well, yeah. You know he, they don't mean it. That was what they used to say in they, the 70s, they, wasn't no, they? No, I was. Yeah. Oh, you know, we're only when, joking. When you were watching Bless. Love thy neighbour or bless, bless this house. Bless this house. I don't think it was bless Anyways, this house. Was it? Bless, bless, bless this neighbour house. <laughs> Whatever it was. <laughs> I can't keep up. Anyway, so right, okay. Five, so, what's the total then? Five and a half. Five and a half. Out of five ten. and a half. I'll give it five, five and a half. half. Five yeah. and a half. Yeah, five and a half. Sorry about that. Well, it's over half marks, thanks to my generous score, and no thanks to your mean score. Not bad. Not. Bad. All right. Uh, your turn to set homework for next week, which is episode ninety-seven. Episode ninety-seven. I'm going to go for. If I said Ramesh Ranganathan. I'd say you're a better man than me because I always struggle to remember his name and do it justice. Uh, well, he chairs panel shows, but you don't like those. He does. Or am I confusing him with... He does. It wouldn't be a panel no. show. You wouldn't do that no. to yourself. No. Uh, no, definitely, <laughs> definitely not. Put Bill Mitchell back in his box. And, and do, um, do you know, I am, I am kind of torn with the fella because, as you rightly say, you know one of my pet hates is the panel show. <clears throat> mm. I just, I just don't, I don't get on with that at all. Um, but I, I, and, I've, and I've also seen him do kind of documentaries where he goes off and uh, he's just I thought travel challenges with his laughs, mum or something like that or whatever. But <laughs> I caught him in a sitcom and I thought, well, I haven't seen him. I've mm-hmm. only seen the trails for it. And I thought I've got to get round and watching that. And I think the only way I'm going to do it is if we was it onto the slab. And uh, and we was away, was away, was away, was away. Don't don't sing any more and copyright. Oh, it's the copyright. Uh, <laughs> don't say that again because I'll do you for copyright. <laughs> Overuse of the word copyright. That's product placement. <laughs> so anyway, I've dropped all my notes. Sorry, I'm trying to write down. What's the show? The called? show is caught. Where's he gone? The show is I've he's under the table now. What's, I'm dr- I'm that drunk. Mate. I looked at the screen. I looked back at you, and you've gone. <laughs> I uh-huh, have. I've disappeared. Um, the show is called The Reluctant Landlord. Oh. Um, Are we thinking uh, Norman, Norman uh, Leonard Rossiter? Um, ah, no, no. No, not that kind of landlord. Pub landlord, I think. For, I think uh-huh. I think the premise of the show, and I could be completely up the wrong tree here, but I think the, the, he, oh. he, he inherits a pub. Um, Doesn't that sound like... Was it... Robert Webb and David Mitchell did. Yes. With a back, pub. it was called. Back, yes. We've got to do that sometime. Yeah. I quite, I quite, uh, what you I quite, I'm not going to tell you what I thought of that. Oh, uh, see. <laughs> you were going to say you quite liked it. He was it. looking then, he was looking. All right, I'm saying nothing. Um, okay. Yeah, so it's Sounds called good. The Reluctant Land. That's what I think it is. Anyway, this is just what I picked up from watching the trials, as I say, I don't know anymore. We'll go, we'll go series one, episode one. I don't know if there's more than series one at this stage. Um, but I think it's, it was on Sky. It was a, a Sky production. And Sky are steadily, ploddingly, uh, plopping out quite a, f- quite a few comedies. Now, whether they're all... Can we say plopping out as a compliment? Yeah, I, uh, yeah. I mean, like, in the way that a chicken plops out a lovely, a lovely <laughs> free-range egg. Prime juice. <laughs> you know. So, yeah, so, th- okay. so they're plopping about a few of those. But, yeah, so um, I'd be interested to see, because I think Sky do things differently um, from the BBC and ITV and Channel 4. They've got, the got their own style, haven't they, really, in, in a sense. So, yeah, so we're, we're mm. episode one, series one of The Reluctant Landlord, starring Ramesh Ranganathan. Uh, that's next week's podcast.
I said it twice without faltering. Fantastic. Okay, well, you've gathered we're at Comedy Slab on Twitter. It'd be great if you followed us. We do tweet sparingly, but quality... Quality... Qualitatively. Qualitative, no. Something like... Yeah, quantitatively. No. I've got too many... Anyway. Yeah, keep them to yourself, mate. But... We we tweet what we think you'll be interested in, so it's it's uh, it's worth following us in our biased opinion, and it is similarly our handle is uh, at Comedy Slab on our Facebook page. So if you could like that and as I say follow us on Twitter, that'd be fantastic. Personal recommendation: whether it's someone in lockdown under your roof, in which case you've got a captive audience, as have we, uh, that'd be great. Or friends, family, whoever down the line. Uh, that's a good title for a show we should probably put on the slab sometime Mm. Um, and uh, however you do it I mean we're all getting familiar with uh, a multiplicity of video conferencing um, opportunities these days be it Zoom Skype FaceTime there's there's ones I can't even remember now but they're they're out there they are out there Teams yes Teams of them no Reams I think's the word there's Reams of Teams Reams of teams, indeed. And uh, so, yes, however you get the message out, it'd be fantastic. We're going for world domination, nothing less. And finally, uh, a nice juicy star rating on iTunes stroke Apple Podcasts. There's different ways of doing that. It's quite easy to do it if you listen via the um, iTunes uh, or is it the Apple po- whatever they call it this week, on your Smarty Pants phone. Uh, you can do it that way, and thank you in advance. Uh, each episode comes out Monday afternoon UK time, uh, there or thereabouts. Normally about three o'clock in the in the afternoon, um, British summer time. We are now BST. If you want to just mm. look that up and check to see where you're listening in the world, whether that relates to uh, the middle of the night. Sorry about that. It's just quite convenient for us, really. And well, you might be an insomniac in Australia. Exactly. Going, oh mate, oh god, it's great. I can't wait for me <laughs> comedy <right>. slam hit. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have to sit and lie with Sheila. Um, although, why you entered? <laughs> no stereotyping there. Why, why you turn into a pot? You never been to Australia, have you? Why you? Uh, <laughs> they are all, and the, they don't like it. To be honest with you, the men are the same. And um, also, um, <laughs> the uh, the places that you can get us, of course, Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, and there's also a kind of a semi-visual sort of thing blipping about on uh, YouTube as well. Wh- whichever your platform... Or is, it, or is it plopping about? Plopping about and plopping out. Uh, whichever platform you listen on, by the way, if you it, normally you can select something that will give you a notification uh, when the next next episode plops out. Um, so uh, just... <laughs> you wouldn't let it lie. Just press the notify me of a plop button and uh, it'll, it'll, <laughs> it, should, it should do it. It'll plop away. Yeah. Um, well, don't. Well, whichever platform you're on, don't stand too close to the oh, edge. No, no, stay, um, stay beyond the yellow line. That's the most important thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, for I haven't prepared anything for this payoff. Do you want to go? Oh first? well, I was going to say. You usually, could think. I was going to say for for, for that's all from us. And thank you very much for listening. Uh, I'm off to cover myself in a, a number of mixed herbs and spices, so that I can publicly <laughs> identify as aromatic. <laughs> And I identify as a very good podcaster, therefore I am one, to almost steal a line from the stage version of Upstart Crow, which is a bit random, as you would say. Um, Thank you very much for listening. Have a good week. Till next time. What's that smell? Oh, it's me. (laughs) 